thank you so much to ZocDoc for sponsoring this episode of Making Moves. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient reviewed, takes your insurance and are available when you need them. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc and I'm one of them. It's my go-to whenever I need to find and book a quality doctor. Go to ZocDoc.com slash moves and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash moves. ZocDoc.com slash moves. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Making Moves. I'm here today with my dear friend, Miss Lexi Hensler. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks so much for coming on the show. I am so impressed by your brown hair. Oh, thank you. It looks so good on you. You can really rock both. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen you in so long, I like forgot I dyed my hair brown. I know, it's been a while. Well, I did see you at a party. That's true, briefly. And I was like, oh! Your hair, but it's like I've, I'm seeing it for a while now, and I, I'm enjoying yeah. it. I'm glad. I'm mm-hmm. glad. <laughs> Do you feel like you resonate with being a brunette more or a blonde? Honestly, I have no clue, but I think it's funny because when I dyed my hair brown, so many people were like, "Oh, you look so much more approachable now," and I was what? like, "I don't know how to take that." <laughs> See, to me, your personality is such a blonde. Like, I feel like you're pretty bubbly yeah. and like I don't know. We got along very easily at the I beginning. Think it we're is. like yeah. pretty outgoing. But you, I will say your eyes with the brunette, ooh, it looks good. Well, you know, I like to keep them guessing. Yeah. So maybe maybe the brunette with the blonde personality is like a little more exciting. Mm-hmm. I don't, I couldn't, I'm scared to do go brunette. Really? I don't think I could do it. I mean, I think it would look amazing, but the blonde also is. Thank you. I just feel like blonde's so me. It is. It, you are, you're like bubbles from Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> I am, literally. Character. <laughs> anyway, okay, Lexi, give the viewers, like, the 411, like, the little elevator pitch on who you are and how you got to where you are now. Wow. I haven't done this in, I haven't done an elevator pitch in a while. Oh. Um, let's see. My name's Lexi. Uh-huh. Um, I was in college studying business and economics and busting tables 50 hours a week. Mm-hmm. And then um, Brent Rivera reached out to me, asked me if I wanted to be in some skits, and I was like, Sure. So I dropped everything, moved to LA with negative money in my bank account, and made it work. And now Wait, you moved to LA. Um, first, first I lived in LA. No way! I didn't and know then that. once I could afford rent money, I moved to Huntington to be closer to Brent. Oh. Yeah. So at the time, my dad was living in LA, so I was able to like thankfully live with him for free. Oh my gosh, that's amazing! And save up for rent. Uh huh. So yeah. Wow. Okay. And he reached out to you via DM, correct? Yeah. It was funny because he DM'd you on Instagram. I was actually driving back from my college formal uh-huh. um, with the frat, and Love. I <laughs> and I just get a Love DM from Brett Rivera saying like, "Hey," and I was like, I was like, "Well, he's not someone that would just like be a creeper hit on me." So like, I automatically like assumed it was a business thing. Oh, so I got really? like excited right off the bat, uh-huh. and sure enough, it was just like a business thing. Uh-huh. So. And did you have any like? followers on Instagram at this time? Yeah, I had like 50,000 just from modeling. That's um, kind of a lot. Way back in the day when I did that. Uh, but That's yeah. a lot, Lexi. Like yeah, I feel like back before. in 2017, I feel like that was pretty good. That's a lot. Not bad. Yeah. And um, you were, you kind of grew up in the area, right? You're California born and raised? Um, NorCal born, SoCal raised. Okay. Yeah. And then where in SoCal? San Diego, Bakersfield, and um, Escondido. Oh, so I haven't heard of that one. It's Where's in, that? It's in northern San Diego. It's a really small town. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Okay, and then you, I know you grew up kind of doing a little bit of acting and like modeling yeah. here and there. That's pretty crazy. Did you, I, I, I mean, growing up in the Midwest, like that was not an option. Like yeah. sports were the option. Like Sports, sports, sports. Was, yeah, was everyone... Um, like that you grew up with, was everyone acting and modeling or were your parents like, our child's special, we're gonna put her in it? I mean, people <laughs> people were definitely like really into sports uh-huh. where I lived, but it was funny because my parents actually put me in, not because they thought I was special, but because I was so shy uh-huh. that they thought it would fix it. Oh, that's kind of smart. <laughs> my parents were like, Okay, you're like, I was so shy I could barely tell people my name. Really? Like, I would warm up to people, uh-huh. but at first it was really hard. So they were like, we'll throw her into theater 
and she'll either sink or swim. She'll probably swim. Uh-huh. But um, it did help a lot with the confidence. But then I just fell in love with it. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. So have you done, like, a bunch of acting gigs then? Um, I used to work for, like, professional theater growing up. Uh-huh. And so I did, like, shows with um, adults when I was, like, 13 for a couple years. I did some stand-up comedy in L.A. Oh, wow. Um, but I never booked any, like tv stuff got it yeah okay so would you want to pursue acting like tv movie stuff in the near future i think so i mean i always wanted to but it's it's so funny because youtube is so different Mm -hmm. like i'm the director producer Mm -hmm. writer actor makeup Um, hair makeup (laughs) literally everything i'm every role (laughs) except the editor and the filmer Mm -hmm. so um it's interesting because it's so different so Uh like i know that i love it but i don't know i don't know where i'll end up I'd yeah. like to try it again, though. It's also crazy. I feel like once you hit a certain threshold on YouTube, like there really isn't there aren't many paychecks like a YouTube paycheck, even when you're that acting in big in big stuff. That is true. I mean, I don't really know how much actors make, but I mean, who am I to say either? But I will <laughs> say like I have a bunch of friends that are actors and they'll be on like shows here and there and like. I don't know. It's it's crazy how much money YouTubers can make just simply because they are like a billboard. Yeah, they that are, is true. They are advertising, you know, yeah. So and advertising money is a lot. Anyway, um, how do you like being a YouTuber? Um, I love it. It's funny because I started getting into it just because everyone was like, oh, you'd be good at it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't know. Like, I never thought I just didn't believe in myself. So I never thought it was an option for me. I was like, no one's going to want to watch me. Like, mm-hmm. what are you talking about? Um, but I started doing it. I fell in love with it. It was like so addicting. Like I can't even sit through a movie sometimes because I'll just be like planning YouTube videos and stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I enjoy it so much. I enjoy the creativity. I enjoy connecting with people across the world. I enjoy connecting with people I film with. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. What do you think makes a good YouTuber? Like what are qualities of a great YouTuber? It's so funny. I feel like I talk about this with people a lot in this space, but like doing it because you enjoy YouTube, not because you enjoy a paycheck. Oh, yeah. I think is the biggest thing. Cause mm-hmm. I feel like so many people nowadays, they're seeing TikTokers and YouTubers. Yes. And seeing their, you know, their success level. Mm-hmm. And I get it. I get that you want the like financial payout. But if that's your main motivation, I do not think it's going to work. Mm-hmm. You know, because I just like people can tell like your authenticity will come through that camera, that little like mm-hmm. phone screen. Um, but I think like, Number one, just actually loving it. Number two, being authentic, staying true to yourself. Mm -hmm. Number three, just like finding your groove, working hard at it. I was lucky enough to like, I was still young enough. I was 20 when I started YouTube. So I was young enough to like be able to like be broke, quit my job, Mm. live like with my parents and just like give it everything. Because I think if I was trying to juggle college and YouTube, I don't know if it would have worked. It can work for some people. For me, I just I had to focus on one thing. Yeah, I also feel like there's you're at a level on YouTube where it's like you're one you're a huge creator and there's people that manage it who I ultimately you're just a smaller creator if you're I feel like it's very rare to do college and YouTube and yeah. be like the bit one of the biggest creators in the world. Like you it's so time consuming that it does take up most of your time. It is oddly time consuming. Mm-hmm. I made like a short just because I thought it was funny and it was obviously sketch comedy where I was like becoming my assistant's assistant like a 30 second Uh short where I did everything wrong again a joke but all the comments were like why do you have an assistant who does this girl think she is I'm like y'all like I feel like some people don't know what goes into YouTube Uh like how much time well explain some of that um I mean for everyone obviously does like YouTube YouTube videos differently and has their niche but for me you know it's hours of planning Mm -hmm. Hours of setting up a set, booking people, a filming day could go anywhere from six to 12 hours. I did one video where I learned to do 50 new skills in a week. Which is insane. It was 13 hour filming days every single day. Like I barely slept. The amount of footage, it was about 30 hours of footage to edit. I didn't edit it, but my editor, bless Roger, um, (sighs) that's a lot. So, you know, you're seeing a very, like, compact version, but the style of YouTube I have been doing Uh is extremely time-consuming. So when you're planning, like, walk me through your brain when you're planning a YouTube video. Um, It's so funny because I feel like I come up with YouTube videos. Some people's in the shower. For me, it's when I'm driving, which is really inconvenient (laughs) because I'm driving. So I usually have to, like, put on my, like, um, 
my voice voice memos uh-huh. and just start like word vomiting, vomiting. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so um, I just like go and then I get home and I st- I get really excited and I start like typing it out making a schedule. I'm definitely what do you mean gonna, typing it out? Typing like your ideas out? Yeah, typing the ideas out and then being like, okay, like I'd want this person in the video. I need these props. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna schedule it here. Like this is some of my ideas. But so now, do you have a full time assistant? Um, no, not anymore. I don't have an assistant anymore. Okay, so you do you schedule everything? Um, no. So I was, and then earlier this year, I actually brought on a um a team uh-huh. that helps me like schedule find location oh, wow everything so that made a huge difference because uh-huh. some of the videos i was doing were way too big for like me and one person to put mm-hmm. together and is this like a team that does this for multiple people and you just hire them per video or is are they fully on your team um they they work for a bunch of different youtubers and people so oh wow yeah so you just like pay them by the video or the hour or something um i have them on like a monthly retainer wow yeah so we do like a certain amount of videos per month and then if it goes over that then we just add on to that monthly mm-hmm. retainer and do you feel like that's fully worth it too? It, def- it definitely has been with the kind of content I was doing because it was just I mean these are also people that like you know they're better at me than like finding studios scheduling stuff mm-hmm. that's like their niche you know whereas I'm just like on pure space like oh this looks good yeah literally <laughs> <laughs> um, especially at the caliber of like challenges you're doing in your videos I feel like you do need help yeah I, I am transitioning to more just like real life vlog style mm-hmm. I still want it to be you know exciting fun travel stuff but I just want to do more real me um and I hope that people will want to watch videos for me than like for these big challenges like a little more lifestyle yeah okay I think that's really exciting yeah. I think you're gonna love that I'm excited for it I hope <laughs> it works out I'm pretty scared oh it'll work out we'll yeah see. it'll be I mean the thing about YouTube is like it's quite literally your life. So yeah. as you grow up, grow up and evolve, so does your yeah. channel and your content, which is cool. Like it should change because that means you're growing. Yeah. You I know? know with my leaving amp video, I was like, you know, I was 20, now I'm 24. Mm-hmm. So obviously like it's time for a new transition. Yeah. It's life. like you're, you were, you finished your senior year. Yeah. And exactly. now you're graduating. Graduated from high school. Yeah. We're on to something, we're on to something different. Okay. Well, tell me a little bit about amp. What the heck is amp? I know it's, Brent's thing but yeah. what, what does it stand for um I was explained that it stands for like amplify so like oh okay yeah cute so just it. like short for amplify kind of I didn't know if it was like a stands for something and no, okay I I'm 99% sure it doesn't amplify <laughs> and explain what the heck amp is for someone that doesn't know yeah it's um basically a group of content creators um, that all work together, support each other. They're all in the social media space, all on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, just like a fun, fun group, usually family friendly. Um, something that like your kids can enjoy or mm-hmm. a teenager could enjoy. Um, I think that's like a good way to like boil it down. Mm-hmm. And it's how many people are in it? Oh, man. Seven now. Oh, Wow. Okay, I think it's kind of similar to like Team Ten and or Hype House, but you don't live in this live in a yeah. house. So I think one thing Brent did well, he did a lot of things smart, but like he didn't have us live together, which I think was really smart. I think that's really smart. Because when you too. live together, like you could be the best person in the world, and it just gets stressful. It gets yeah. hard. It's, you get annoyed with anyone you live exactly. with, exactly, and it could be your favorite person in the world. So I think keeping us like separate and then having a place for us to come film was really smart. Mm, Okay. And Brent started this. How old was he when he started this? Oh, man. I mean, I don't exactly know when like the idea formed. Uh I joined in 2019 and I was one of the first. So I think it was around 2017, 2018 that he started having this idea Mm -hmm. Um, or at least started like putting moves in place but I was one of the first people to join the group Mm -hmm. along with um Ben had just joined Andrew was joining at the time the Stokes twins Mm -hmm. um his sister was super busy in high school but then we got to see more of her which was awesome and slowly evolved and then Pearson Jeremy Dom came and Mm -hmm. that's pretty much the group do you feel like YouTube groups like collaborating like that is a big reason why you guys are also successful? Absolutely. I mean, there were multiple things about it that helped so much, whether it was even just like 
having someone to film with that's also and then you kind of push each other um, work wise and you also push each other with like following Mm -hmm. you know and then also it's just kind of you have someone to lean back on you have someone to talk to you Mm -hmm. have you know if you're not if I were to like take a couple weeks off YouTube um, everyone in the group is still filming and I'm in I was in the group so it did kind of help give you like a little bit of like a safety net Uh uh-huh um yeah it's literally like you're a team yeah you're you're literally Mm -hmm. a team it's like a soft it's like playing softball versus tennis Mm -hmm. you know wait so question if you were to come up with a video idea and you needed people in it was it like was it automatic that all of those people in amp would be in it yeah. Like you didn't have to like ask because sometimes I feel like, oh, I feel bad like asking my friend to be in this video. Yeah, I feel But you. it was just like assumed like, oh, of course I'll be in it because I'll be in mine. Like kind of like. Yeah, exactly. It was just like if I ever asked them, they were always down. If they ever asked me, I was always mm-hmm. down. And it was never like, well, you were in two of my videos this month. OK, so that's what I, I was kind of wondering. So it, was, like, it was never like that. It was just like, oh, hey, like, do you want to be in this video? Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, which is really easy. I always wanted I'd always love to have other people in my videos, too, and like try out different people. But it's oddly hard to find someone who's down uh-huh. and like, f- like really good on camera, finds it fun. Uh-huh. It's yeah. Even something as simple as like who the fork is available at like 1 p.m. on a Thursday. Yeah. To film. Yeah, you know, like if people you, have real jobs. If you, you know? have a nine to five, no, you're not yeah. available at one p.m. And then maybe your weekends are when you're like pulling like things together for the next week. So. Exactly, exactly. And I will say that it is so true. Like having my uh, normal like hometown friends on camera, like people get weird because being on camera is weird. Yeah, it like is it hard. took me years to get comfortable in front of the of camera. Course. Like sometimes even when I'm on other people's like sets or um, their yeah. videos like you get a little awkward yeah, just because new. You're, you're not comfy yet. yes exactly so yeah that, I think that's a really cool way that you guys all collaborated yeah are you looking forward to collaborating with other people in I, the near future now that you're I guess not a part of AMP anymore I know it's crazy I like it's actually been a couple months uh-huh. but I just announced it yesterday oh really to the world Okay, wait, can so, you tell me about it? Tell me about why you decided to leave or and all um, that. Um, I was just I was ready for something new. Mm-hmm. I was ready to transition. Um, I do want to pursue things like singing and different things. And for me to do that, I wanted to be in LA. Mm. And I just I knew I knew my time there was coming to an end and I was ready for something different. So mm-hmm. I finally pulled the plug. I moved to LA. Um, and then I just I took some time to like gather my thoughts and make sure I was like ready to tell the world like mm-hmm. Hey, I left. I'm on my own now. Yeah. Thank you so much to ZocDoc for sponsoring this episode of Making Moves. Y'all know how much I love ZocDoc. Before you book any brunch, you pour over lists and lists of reviews. So why not do the same when you're booking a doctor's appointment? With ZocDoc, you can see real verified patient reviews to help find the right doctor in your network and in your neighborhood. After all, finding the right doctor is just as, if not more important, than finding the right plate of eggs Benedict. I love ZocDoc so much because I moved to LA without knowing a soul, no aunts, no uncles, no family members, and I had no one to recommend any of their doctors to me. ZocDoc is so convenient for anyone that has just moved to a big city or hasn't found a doctor they love yet to find the perfect doctor because they're actual patient-reviewed doctors on there and they consider all of the things. Is it in your insurance network? Is it near you? Are they going to attend to all of your needs? ZocDoc has it all. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient reviewed, takes your insurance and are available when you need them. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc and I'm one of them. It's my go-to whenever I need to find and book a quality doctor. Go to ZocDoc.com slash moves and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's zocdoc.com slash moves. ZocDoc.com slash moves. How did you know you were ready for a transition like that? Because I feel like a lot of people in life, they get comfortable, whether it's yeah. their job or a relationship and things like that. And how do you know, like for someone listening that's maybe like itching or they're getting that weird feeling, like how do you know when it's time to take action? Um, Man, I feel like, I feel like even just trusting yourself 
Mm-hmm. Cause like I feel like you know before you know. Yes, I like, think that's true. Like whether it's a breakup or a transition in life or whatever it is, like you know before you know. Mm-hmm. Like you have that gut feeling that's kind of like something's off. Mm-hmm. I want some change here, but mm-hmm. it's scary. And it I is. mean, for a lot of people, like to make a huge life transition could be extremely, like it could go really badly where mm-hmm. it's like maybe you don't have the resources to completely like pause your life mm-hmm. and change something. You know, I am extremely thankful that I did have, you know, enough like saved and I had done enough financial planning to where I was like, if I quit AMP and no, not a soul watches my video ever again mm-hmm. and I lose my platform, I would at least have a few months to get a new job, mm-hmm. you know? So I, I am very thankful for that. And I recognize that privilege. Um, but I, I, I had known for about a year that I was ready to transition, but I was so scared. I was like, I just had these irrational intrusive thoughts that I think we all have. I was like, everyone's going to leave like all five millions of five million of my subscribers are going to leave. Oh my gosh. Like these are like the thought processes that you have. I mean, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. You're saying that. But when you're in your position, like I get it. I get it. I was like, you know, everyone only follows me. Because I'm Brent's friend. Uh-huh. I was like all of those thoughts. And then I really had to tell myself, I was like, you know what? That's not true. I can do this. I hope you know that's not true. <laughs> I think like to an extent it's not true. I don't know. I think I think I'll I think I'll, I'll hopefully prove myself wrong in the next few months, but but you know, I, I just figured at the end of the day I would rather try and fail than like fork, yeah. Then wonder, you know, what would happen. Mm-hmm. So. Because you kind of marinated on this for a year. Yeah. Do you regret doing that? Do you wish you would have taken action a little earlier? Or do you kind of um, like that you took your time? You know, one thing that I really hold myself accountable to is I will never live with regret. Wow. Okay. No matter what has happened, like, I can honestly say I don't regret anything in my mm-hmm. life. And I'll find some reason for everything that's happened or everything. But um, I think I needed that time. I think I needed that time to mature and like grow some confidence. For me, one of the moments that really helped was going to VidCon and meeting people and connecting with people. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh, they're real people, you know? Yeah, it's so crazy like (laughs) on the internet when you meet people, you're like, whoa, like you're so cool, you watch me? Yeah, like it's like- Like I'm a part of your daily routine, that's weird. You're like, I'm looking at this person holding like one of my weighted stuffed animals and I'm like, whoa, this is so weird. You're not like a number on a screen. Like I love that I get to hug you and see you. Mm -hmm. And for me, like that was kind of just a clarifying moment. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm glad I'm glad I took the time I needed to be sure and ready. I think if I had taken any more time, it would have been like, OK, Lexi, like get back on the horse. Like, uh-huh. let's get going here. But um, but no, I think it was like a good amount of time. What did you do in preparation for your transition? I know you said you like saved a little bit of money, but like you did a lot. You moved, you dyed your hair. <laughs> you're now, you know, not a part of this group anymore, which I'm st- sure you're still really close with. Yeah, um, but that is a big like life change. Like, what did you do to prep? It's funny because, I mean, you know, what is a girl to do with a major life change? Hair. Hair. Obviously. First step. You know, it's funny because I didn't even think like, oh, like I'm leaving AMP. I should make like a statement. All, like I was literally just like, there's so much change. You know what? I need to dye my hair. That's going to make me feel better. Obviously. But, um, but uh, I think like really the only thing I did do to prep was I made sure I had enough money saved to where I could fall flat on my butt and be okay for a few months. Mm-hmm. And then I made sure to just work on, like, my confidence. I started planning out videos. That's why it took me so long as well to um, post that I would left. Because once I posted that, I really wanted to tell people, like, hey, I have grown a lot. I want to change my style a bit mm-hmm. to, like, really be more authentic. It was authentic before, but mm-hmm. I was like, I want you guys to see, like, the friends I hang out with every day. Mm. Like, I want you to see, like, everything that I haven't been showing you just mm-hmm. because I thought it was boring, you mm-hmm. know? Um, so I really, I started planning that out, really like getting it down to exactly what I wanted it to be. And I'm sure it'll continue to evolve, but, but yeah, I just did some preparations like that, but I mean, there's only so much I could prep to like fully be ready. And then moving to LA was obviously a big step. Mm -hmm. I mean, all my closest friends live in LA. Mm -hmm. So it was so hard. I'm so shocked you haven't moved here earlier, honestly. Well, I mean, when I was filming with the group, like I filmed with them, you know, Monday through Friday, every single day. Mm -hmm. So I would have been driving like an hour and a half every day. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay. I want to talk a little bit about YouTube videos because I admire the heck out of your YouTube videos. Thank you. I think your ideas are really fabulous. 
Um, speaking of ideas, how do you know in your head, like, what's a good idea for a YouTube video? Hmm. You know, that is a good question because <laughs> a lot of the times I am not sure. <laughs> like, really? I feel like YouTube, I used to know, like, what would perform well, like, pretty, like, 90% accuracy. That's what everyone says. And it has changed. Uh-huh. <laughs> the game has changed. So now I'm... I also, like, had an issue with all my videos getting, like, restricted and stuff, too. What? Like, Why? It was, like... I found it was an accident. It was, like, a bot oh. on YouTube that was automatically restricting all my videos. Oh, my gosh. But I was just, like, what is going on? I was, like... I started doing... Because I didn't really like to do videos that other people had been doing. But I was, like, I'm going to test it. So I did a couple videos that other YouTubers had done, given them credit... Um, and then I was like, okay, this video goes viral for everyone. And it bombed for me. And I was really? like, what is going on? So that was that was a transitional period as well. But um, but it, it's hard it's hard to know. I feel like you also though have to stay true to like your niche. Mm-hmm. Like if I were to like randomly post a video, which is why I've been so scared to transition, if I were to randomly post a video that's so outside of my niche, like it's probably not gonna bring in the same audience. It's probably gonna like take a hit. Mm-hmm. But um What would you say is your niche? That's so hard because it was. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It was challenge videos. Mm -hmm. Um, And that whole, you know, I looked, I still do look so much up to Mr. Beast and Arak and Ryan Trahan and Mm -hmm. all of them. I love Ryan Trahan. Oh, his his Penny series. He's my favorite. (gasps) Dude, that Penny series. (laughs) And I was like, on me. oh my gosh, I was in the Maldives. I would wake up every morning. It's the first thing. I wouldn't text anyone. I would just start the series every I, day. It literally got me through that month or whatever it was. Oh, I was so lost that month. I was like, I have no clue what I'm doing with my life. Really? I'm, I, I'm just going to like quit and move to an island and like get a bartending job because I am that lost in my life right now. Oh my and that series um, reminded me why I loved YouTube. Yes, same. Also, he, the way that he incorporated, or the way he incorporated, like, giving back, but not in, like, a corny way. Yeah. Like, it felt so genuine. It, yeah. And, um, I don't know, it made me want to, like, do something with my life and, like, challenge yeah. myself and put myself out there and, like, make myself uncomfortable. Like, I, yeah. <laughs> not us, like, literally gassing up, like, Ryan Trey on this entire podcast now. Oh, but, like. <laughs> But, like, he, truly, I had never watched his videos, and I found that yeah. on re- my recommended and was blown away. And I was, like, donating, watching every day, talking to my brother about it, getting people to watch. Like, yeah. it was so good. It it really was. I mean, it was so inspiring. And for me, you know, as someone who wanted to do more, like, lifestyle, real-life stuff, I was, like, versus, you know, this whole, like, challenge video, uh-huh. I was, like, oh, my gosh. I was, like, this guy is just, like – in these like random situations with a little tiny microphone yeah. and he's so he's sitting at McDonald's yeah eating his he eating his chicken oh my God. and he's so yes. entertaining i was like his maybe, chicken. i was like maybe i can do this yeah but should we do yeah. the penny series you know maybe that looked hard as heck though i will i will say it did it did also the way this is what i also love about youtube is it's like it's always the videos that were like shot on an iphone yeah very low production that like blow my mind it's crazy and i mean you've done like i feel like the craziest productions for videos like mr b style and also i'm sure you started like yeah using an iphone or whatever the case is to film and um it really goes to show like you don't need insane production just to have a no great uh, it's about the video yeah like yeah and sometimes um those insane productions like the video doesn't even perform as well as you would hope well you know what's funny is i think people are almost craving just an iphone now yeah because i feel like it became so extreme i mean you scroll through youtube and you see the same thumbnail that every like one person started and Uh every single person is copied that was for me when i really knew i wanted to transition like it made me sick i was Mm -hmm. like this platform used to be a place for people to come on their unique individual selves. They so were original. making no money. So they were really doing this because they loved mm-hmm. it. I was like, how many people would be on YouTube today if we didn't make True. any money? But um, thankfully we do. So we can afford to do it. Yeah. But um, <laughs> but yeah, man, I was just like, I was like, I don't want to I don't want to be a part of that. I was like. I look up to the people that are original in the space mm-hmm. and I want to be one of those people in my own way. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Ryan, Ryan Trahan, man, I could do a whole. I could talk yeah, for a whole hour on him. Um, what type of videos are you wanting to do? 
Um, like, give me some title ideas or give me oh, some, man. like, yeah. Um, I know you want to do, like, you know, more about yourself or, I guess, lifestyle-y, but... Well, it's funny because, like... What does that entail? I'm so OCD that I have my videos through, like, January planned out. Shut the fork up. That's, okay, like, how... Talk OCD, me through that. That's how OCD... What do you mean? Talk me through that. So I how? start with... Um, and this is how I've always done YouTube, is I start with, you know, I post every Sunday. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I have, like, my dates for each month, like, each Sunday. And then I go through, yeah, thank you, mm -hmm. 9 a.m. on Sundays. And then I, like, go through, like, my idea vomit, and I'm like, okay, like, I'd want to do this in this month, this in this month. And then I start kind of, like, shelling them out a little where, I, you know. Wait, I'm sorry. I have to interrupt. What do you mean idea vomit? What does that look like? Um, I'll just, like, when I'm just driving, uh -huh. and I start idea vomiting into, like, a voice note. Got and it. I, like, so have all these ideas. randomly your ideas. Yeah, and okay. then I can just shell them out more where I'm like, okay, I want to, you know. I bought my whole friend group flights to Hawaii. <gasps> um, Wait, shut the fork up. Yeah. I want to do that. So I'm going to surprise everyone with tickets to Hawaii tomorrow. And Stop. We're just like, we're going to go in a week or so. But um, but yeah, like Cover and Alex and everyone. Stop. But You guys are going to have the best time. Yeah, I was like, I want to do that. And then like, I'll, I'll like, you know, make some ideas within that. But then just let everything happen organically from there. Okay. Okay. So you had the idea, like, I want to surprise my friends with tickets to Hawaii. Yeah. That was the idea. Yeah. Okay. And you did that. But also, I'm like, how do you game plan that? Are they all YouTubers? Like, are um, they all allowed to just, like, leave? Yeah, they, they all are in the content space. Okay. So they don't, they don't have nine to fives. Got it. Um, But they've all been talking about wanting to go to Hawaii. And, but, like, none of them would actually commit to, like, a day or anything. Mm. And Alex is such a workaholic. I look up to him so much in that respect as well. He's such a great creator as but well. But he, yeah. like, won't take time off. So I may I got his schedule from his assistant <gasps> and I found like a day period with Cover, his girlfriend that would work. And I was like, okay, we're booking this and like we're going and you're gonna relax. Wait, that's so cute, Lexi. So, yeah. yeah. I was like, honestly, like I do crazy stuff like this, like going on a four day first date, like running off to Europe with someone I just met. I'm like, I should just vlog because like my real life is interesting. Yeah. But yeah. True. Yeah. Um wait, so the video is, are you gonna title it like Surprising my friends with Hawaii tickets or something? Probably, like surprising yeah. my friends with a trip to Hawaii. And then you'll just see how it unfolds. You don't really have plans while you're there. Yeah, so I'll shell out, I'll shell out a few things. Like I planned out like how I'm going to tell them with like hula dancers and pina coladas and stuff like Stop. that. Stop, that's so cute. <laughs> but um, like I, I obviously like had to plan that, schedule that. You're so extra. And I then love I'll, it. I am very extra. Yeah, you are. And then Your I'll... birthday party last year? Are you, are you kidding me? Oh, that yeah. You know what's funny though is that was so extra that this year I'm not doing that. Oh really? I'm not throwing any kind of party. <laughs> so if you want to get dinner, like yeah, we'll probably... do dinner. You should do dinner. That'd be fun. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Hibachi. Yes. That obviously. Nice. You could do like an at home. That's what I was thinking. You should do that. That's so fun. Private. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've done that before. It's really fun and really yeah, good. Yeah, Cover and Alex did one of those nights and I was like, this is nice. Yeah, you should do that. Okay, so you plan out you planned out the hula dancers. <laughs> And then and the invitation. Yeah. And then I'll have some ideas for like, you know, options we could do in Hawaii, but then just let it unfold for there. I always like to have like a game plan, you know, but then just let whatever happens organically happen. Mm -hmm. And are you bringing a filmer? No. So instead of having a videographer follow, you know, us with a camera, mm -hmm. I'm going to transition to me holding the camera. Oh, great. So I think that's one of the really big transitions I did want to make is like, I feel like you're so much more connected when like I'm holding a camera mm -hmm. versus like this big professional camera being in my face. Mm -hmm. I feel like I even just like have more of my own personality mm -hmm. when I'm holding a vlog camera. Oh, totally. But yeah. I do unhinged shit. Like yeah. when it's like my own I don't know what in it the comfort is. of my own home versus, versus like if I was holding yeah. a camera on you. It's so weird. It is weird. And I feel like I turn it on in an unorganic way. Yeah. Like for a camera that's not my own. It almost feels like you're like, you know, acting in like a movie yeah you're like it feels like it's too, like okay too BTK now yeah it's like be lexi now yeah but instead of just like actually being yourself actually, yeah <laughs> um okay so that's one of the videos is are there any others you want to share um <laughs> i i do want to take off and do some travel content in the next couple months you so. okay this is something i'm very envious of you you when you have an idea of where you want to go you just forking plan it and i'm like <laughs> Technically, I could do that, but, like, also I can't. But I, I, that's something I want to do. But yeah. how do you make it worth, like, like the Dubai video and, like, the $25,000 uh, plane ticket and stuff like that? And even the Maldives, like, the underwater, all those videos, yeah. I'm, like, blown away by. Like, did you feel like they were worth the amount you spent on them? 
So what's funny is I would boil it down like this. I There have been three times that I almost died in my life. So I've been in the hospital like for a very long period of time. Mm-hmm. Like I've almost lost my life three times. Oh my God. So for me, that is kind of how I live with no regret. That is how I'm willing to take these big risks. That is kind of how I'm not afraid of failure. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm like, you know, failure, at least you're still alive. So True. that's a great, honestly, that's a great way to look at it. I you know, know you're deep, alive. But yeah. yeah. But, um, but for me, I was like, I really wanted to do these videos. Uh-huh. I was like, I think they would be so cool. I'll do it as like a series where they all connect. Like we land in the plane and then it, um, we check into the seven star hotel. The next video is a seven star hotel. Yeah. I was so excited for it. My financial guy was like, which obviously you have to have one of those because I'm a girl and I like shopping and I need someone to tell me not to. So um, he was like, it's a lot of money. And I was like, I know. He's Is this like, your accountant um, or financial advisor? Financial advisor okay. does my accounting, but he was like, you haven't had a brand deal in a year. And I was like, I know. And he was like, you're going to do it though. And I was like, yeah. So I Wait, did it. Wait, what do you it. mean you haven't had a brand deal in a year? Um, I haven't had a brand deal in a year. Why? Um, That's a good question. That's crazy. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. I know. I know. Are you so, are you like getting offers or just turning them down? N- no. Okay. <laughs> I don't I don't know what happened. But um What the heck? But that obviously was hard cuz brand deals are like beautiful little presents of yeah. like here's some money to keep living your dream, you uh-huh. know, that helps a lot, but but he, yeah, so he was like, I know you're going to do what you want because you do that. But um, just like, this is a lot. And you're not going to make your money back. Like, uh-huh. my AdSense did not cover what I did in those four videos. Okay. Paying for two people to fully come with me, a videographer and a person to, like, be a part of the video. Uh-huh. Uh, but I was like, you know what? I want to make these videos. I'm really excited about them. I'm really passionate about them. Uh-huh. And you know what's funny is those videos performed much better than any of my videos have this year. Oh, great. And I think it's because... You know, I just was so passionate about it. I was mm-hmm. like, I want to do this. I don't care how well they do. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, they could get no views. Well, they're also so extreme. They are pretty extreme. But um, but yeah, I but, just I wanted to do it. Yeah, I know. Well, I love that. Where where are you wanting to travel? Um, I have a few things planned. Um, I think we're gonna do. We're trying to decide because um, my boyfriend and I are just gonna go. Mm-hmm. Um, so probably. Finland. <gasps> Gorgeous. This is really interesting. Mm-hmm. Might go to the North Pole. <gasps> Stop. <laughs> How do you really, do that? I really, I really want to. You could just go to the North Pole. Oh, my gosh. I was like, I feel like that'd be really cool for Christmas YouTubers time. YouTubers have, like, the coolest jobs. Like, yeah. the fact that we can be like, ooh, where do I want to go in real life? And you just make it a part of your job. It um it blows my mind on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Like, some t- Like, when I got to the Maldives, I just sat there. And I was dead silent for two and a half hours on the beach. And my friends were like, are you okay? And I was like, I'm just in shock right now. I was like, I don't know what I did to like deserve this. And I wish every single person could be here right mm-hmm. now. Um, Wait, how how much was the Maldives hotel? Are you allowed to say? Yeah, so that, that hotel ranges in price. So I didn't realize that <laughs> with all my research, I didn't research that I went during monsoon season. And by some stroke of whatever you believe in, um, there was not one day of rain. Shut up. When we were there. So that room ranges from 10K a night to 50K a night. Um, depending on the season? Depending on the season. So because it was monsoon season, I got it for 10K a night. Wait, explain the room. Because um, for people that don't know, it, it's insane. You have to watch the video. I think they need to like describe it better on the website because I didn't realize it's a whole villa. Mm-hmm. Um, in the Maldives. In the Maldives, in the middle of the ocean. So it's a private villa in the middle of the water. It's like four bedrooms, these huge bedrooms, um, this huge living room. You have your own patio. You have a patio to watch the sunrise Mm -hmm. and a patio to watch the sunset on the other side. They thought through everything. Like, it was incredible. Um, And didn't they build it in, like, where'd they build it and then they... Took Bangkok. It on a yeah, yeah, yeah. They built it in Bangkok, took it on a boat, and placed it in the ocean in the Maldives. And it's like part of it's underwater. Yes. So then you have this electric elevator or stairs. You can guess which one I took every day. And um, <laughs> you go down, and you're 15 meters underwater. That is this, bananas. Like, dome. It was like the coolest thing watching your video. I loved the part where you could like change the lights in the room yeah. and then it like affects the fish and the how fish they go like crazy. Yeah, you like change the light and all the fish like 
That is crazy. I think that was a really good impression. And of there's fish, like but... sharks flying, like or sharks flying. swimming <laughs> <laughs> over you, swimming around next to you. Did you actually sleep in that room? I did. Oh so my god! I slept down there, and I think like a core memory for me will always be in the morning. I woke up and I opened my eyes, and there were just fish. It was crazy. But that is so. I didn't want to sleep. I was so excited, uh-huh. but finally, like I fell asleep. All the sun. Uh, I was so tired. But, oh yeah. my gosh. That is like a literal. I know you said it's a bucket bucket list thing, but it is. Yeah. So it's 10k to 50k a night. Yes. How much did you spend? So I could t- definitely afford one night, mm-hmm. um, and then the other nights I did like their cheapest rooms. Oh, so, smart. Yeah. So it was me and two of my guy friends, um, and so we all just stayed in like one room together wherever we were. We had like we had them bring in like a little rollaway bed in oh, each cute. room. Okay. Um, but yeah. So that and out. so, how much did you end up paying at the bi- the big one for the night? The big one, the, the big underwater villa. room. Yeah, um, ten k for one night. Oh wow! Okay, yeah, that's a lot of money. It is. Mm-hmm. It is for one night. But you did know, you think it was worth it? Like actually, it's it's so hard because money is like one of those things that is so relative. Uh huh. Like. For Mr. Beast, that's probably a dollar. Yeah. You know, <laughs> for me, it's a good chunk of money. Uh-huh. For some people, unfortunately, like. That is like, you know, we got to do some real planning for that. And yeah. I I really wish we could all just like, I wish money wasn't a thing. Like, mm-hmm. I wish we could all just do anything. But um, would you pay for that room if you weren't a YouTuber and you weren't filming that video? It's so hard to know. You yeah. know, I've been in this world for so many years now. Um, oh, man. Maybe I'd probably I'd probably make a game plan to save up for like because mm-hmm. I did really want to do it. I'd probably make a game plan to like save up for a while, find some friends that were willing to save as well and like join our money together. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. My thing is like, I don't know when I'm going to die. And that's why I was like, I really want to go. Mm-hmm. And no one was like down to go with me. Pearson was like too busy. Like everyone was like, I can't make the time. But that's what I love about you. You're just like, for, like fuck it. Like, so I'm gonna I, go. I found two people that had free time. I was like, I will pay for everything. Just come. That's I'm crazy. I'm not going to the Maldives alone. That would actually be crazy. Yeah. Um, um, okay, went. and then when you stayed in the like smaller regular hotel rooms, was that Which is still amazing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that still a part of like this hotel resort, or was yeah. this a different? Okay, yeah. So they they have a bunch of different rooms. They mm-hmm. have like land rooms. They have like overwater villa <laughs> rooms. Land rooms, you know. Um, but yeah, okay. So they have lots of options. Okay, and why is like traveling so important to you? I've always wanted to travel. We didn't travel growing up. So the first place I like really went was Hawaii when I saved up tip money from working in the restaurant. Oh my God, cute. And I love it. Like ever since I was a kid, like getting on a plane was like the most exciting thing ever to me. But um, I think travel is really important. You learn, you learn so much about the world and yourself, experiencing other cultures, meeting people, mm-hmm. seeing the world, like not just like having blinders on. Um, but yeah, it's yeah. really important. To it me. definitely opens. It just like expands your mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you have a favorite place you've been? Because you've so, traveled a lot. It's so funny because I've loved so many places. Mm-hmm. Like I don't think I could pinpoint one. The Maldives was amazing. Mm-hmm. Bermuda Triangle was amazing. Ooh. Also, some of the nicest people I've met really um, were Bermudians. Um, South of France, Italy, Italy. I love Italy. Yeah. A lot of great places. Uh huh. I love there's there's like a photo I remember. I think I like replied to your story of you in Paris and you can like you're like eating breakfast or something and your like hair looks so perfect and the Eiffel Tower is in the background. Do you know what I'm talking about? Was that me? I think it was you. Really? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I remember <gasps> replying to your story being like, Lexi, what the heck? I'm so jealous. Or it was something in Paris. Yeah, let's go on a trip sometime. And I was like, oh, Lexi, you're always traveling somewhere cool. I would be so down. Um, okay, I want to do a little segment called Money Moves. Cool. Um, so I'm going to ask you like a few rapid fire questions about okay. money because... I don't know. You spend money on fun things. <laughs> I do. I do do that. <laughs> okay. What's the most money you've spent on a video? Um, the com- So the four videos being in Dubai and the Maldives was probably about 45K. Wow. You know what? 
That's a fuck ton of money. I kind of thought it would be more though. I did too. I was yeah. very thankful. <laughs> yeah. At a because certain the point, ticket was 25K. Yeah. At a certain point, we were eating McDonald's for every meal, you know, but McDonald's is great. You, you pick and choose. They have a garlic sauce. It's yeah. delicious. Wow. Um, how much were the guys' tickets that were in economy? One way, to Dubai. one way was about a grand. Oh, that is so like not not that that's affordable, but that's way less than yeah. I thought it would be. For, I, in I my head, it was like five k. I thought it'd be more. I mean that that is one way though. Yeah, that is a lot. So, so. the way back was about a k too. So two k round but trip. But sometimes Europe can be about that. You really you got to book in advance. Like uh-huh. I preach that to people. Like if you're booking in advance, you're gonna get a way better price point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and how long was the flight? Um, 16 hours. Did you like live your best life on that flight? Oh my God, yeah. I was like, I can't sleep. I have to enjoy every moment of this because I am never going to be in this, this yeah, seat again. Did you again. not sleep at all? I did. I did sleep. I mean, it was an overnight flight. I like, at some point, my body gave in. But, uh-huh. um, but yeah, I experienced the shower on the plane. Like, insane. I drank all the champagne. I was like, <laughs> it was free. I was like, I got to I got to soak it up. That is crazy. Okay, next question. Is there anything you regret purchasing for a video? I know you don't have regrets, but hmm. Oh man, you're like ah, that what did feel worth it? I have to think about it, but it's rapid fire. Oh, it's okay. Oh, (laughs) oh, oh, the struggle. Um, no, there isn't anything. I can't think of anything. Okay, what's the uh, best money you've spent when it came to furthering your business? So like. Getting an editor, okay. assistant, um, nice camera. For me, probably my production team. Okay. Like, because it, it incorporates an editor, a producer, an assistant, like that whole thing. Wow. Um, which has been like game changing for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, but also like I always tell people like if you want to start YouTube, use your iPhone and just start, mm-hmm. you know? No, oh, 100%. Um, do you have any saving or investing tips? Ooh, um, I would definitely say like make, you know, game plan. And there's so much information online and even like amazing financial people that make YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. Um, But you definitely like you do want to save a good amount of your money and put it away. Um, You want to invest a good amount of money, but safe investments. There's investments you can do that like, you know, aren't as risky. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, they don't make you as much as quickly. But if you can just keep that money away for a while and let it grow, um, that's something I've done. Um. But yeah, definitely like really important. I mean, just like pick a certain amount of money that you know you're not going to touch for a couple of years and just let it grow. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. And then I don't know if you'll answer this, but the most amount of money you've made from a video. Made from a video? Mm-hmm. Oh, um, I mean, I definitely like believe in just being an open book. Mm-hmm. I think my best performing video made me 30K. Wow, that's great. That's fabulous. Yeah. That's sick. I mean, that was like... 15 million views though that's crazy i'm sure people have made more on those views uh-huh. but but i think that was mine it's crazy thinking about like mr beast i know it's so insanity cool. next level yeah um i know you're like a fan of him and you have like i feel like you have similar content sometimes what do you feel like in your head makes a great youtube video other than like being authentic like do you feel like there's more i guess like tangible practical tips you can give like in regards to there needs to be a beginning middle and end or there needs you know stuff like that they need yeah. you need to have good lighting stuff like that yeah um i mean i think like the basics are definitely you know make sure like you have good lighting good audio mm. i always tell people like if you're just starting youtube throw in background music oh i agree it makes a huge difference like if someone's just talking mm-hmm. but there's a little background music vibe it helps Agreed. a lot um, like, do you have a non-negotiable, like, ah, we have to refilm that, or, like, ah, we have to edit that, or redo that, or, you know what I mean? You know what's funny is, like, I won't refilm, like, anything. Really? Like, because, you know, the first take is, like, oh, it's just going to be the best, because it's real. So. That's a good tip. There have been so many times that, like, things have not gone as planned, like, just reactions or something, and I'm like, well, we're either not going to put it in the video, or we're just going to put it in the video, because I'm not refilming that. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of how I do it. Every, uh-huh. Everyone everyone does it differently. Like you gotta experiment and see what works for you for mm-hmm. sure. But I, mean, I think for someone like Mr. Beast, a lot of planning, a lot of brainstorming, mm-hmm. a lot of trial and error. I mean, there's videos that he's never posted that cost him so much money to make. So true. I I do feel like people underestimate 
the power of like a good brainstorm sesh. Yeah. And like how productive that can be. Yeah. I mean, I would love to, you know, just sit down with like a few friends mm-hmm. and just like what about this? What about this? Like yeah. me and my we boyfriend, me and my boyfriend were doing that at like 1 a.m. last night because uh-huh. I was like, the video I was going to film this week fell through and I was like, what am I going to do? We're going out of town on Tuesday. I'm having like a procedure on Wednesday. Like, uh-huh. I don't know what to do. Like, I don't have time. I have to get it to my editors or else I won't get it back in time for Sunday. I just promised everyone I'm going to post on Sunday every Sunday. I can't miss my first week. Yeah. So we stayed up for like an hour and a half brainstorming. So and do you have a video idea? Yeah. We're going to film for like 13 hours today. So Today? <laughs> yeah. What are you filming? Um, we're going to try to go on as many dates as we can in 24 hours. Oh, great. So we're just going to like go crazy. Oh my gosh. I think it'll be a fun video. Yeah. The the one thing that's nice about that style of video is like you knock it out in a day. Yeah. I do like filming in a day. Yeah. It is nice. Yeah. And then you don't, you don't have to get ready every day. You're like, you have your one filming. There is that. Mm -hmm. That What's your, um, what do you feel like the, the keys currently are to growing on YouTube? consistency okay consistency consistency like what weekly like what would Um, you tell me i would i would do once a week because i have some friends that um were trying to do like two three times a week to grow their youtube and they were getting so burnt out Mm -hmm. and you know i think some people would argue with me on this but i would say quality over quantity Mm. i know some people disagree and again everything works differently for everyone but for me it was one video every week at the same time, the same day. It was always 9 a.m. Sundays for me. I did that for three years until I started being a little more inconsistent. Um, but that helped a lot. It's like people can know when to come back. I think the algorithm favors you as well. Mm-hmm. Um, really, like, YouTube's amazing because they give you so many analytics, studying those analytics, mm-hmm. um, studying other people's channels that you want to be like. Mm. And that doesn't mean copying their thumbnail and putting your face on it. That means like, okay, you love that inspirational idea. Take that idea and do something different with it. Make it your do your own. style. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, those would be my top tips. What would you say your opinion is on like TikTok versus YouTube and like, you know, the different types of creators on yeah, each platform? That's so hard. It's funny because TikTok something where like you can blow up overnight. Mm-hmm. YouTube, you cannot. No. <laughs> YouTube YouTube's more of a long game. But um but I think they're also they also have different things to offer. Like mm-hmm. TikTok, you're really getting like a glimpse like right into someone's life if they're doing more like personality stuff. Like you're getting really like raw stuff. Like I love like I like woke up this morning and Tana had just like posted a video where she was like makeup list. She's like, I need to talk about this and just started filming. Uh-huh. Stuff like that I love. Um, or dance videos. There's so many different areas on TikTok. Like I follow like a doctor and then I follow like a teacher and then I follow like a fireman it's and so like, specific and random it really is uh-huh. but I feel like try both and see what you love mm-hmm. I will say I feel like on YouTube your fan base or followers are more dedicated to you as a creator probably versus like TikTok like sometimes I don't even know like people's names it's just when they come on my for you page yeah. I'm like oh I like this person that is true but there are some people through TikTok that like like Anna Sitar like wait she- Who's that? Like Anna and Brew, that couple. She's like oh, a really cute blonde. Blonde. Yeah, yeah, I know I her. mean, she is like, like I think like one of like the top mm-hmm. TikTokers with fan bases right now. Like, really? Oh my God. I, I'm. She kills it. Like that's someone whose career where I'm like, girl's killing it. Oh my God. I need to follow her. It, that's what's so weird about TikTok too is like randomly I'll be talking to Alicia. She's like, do you know the B girl on TikTok? And I'm and like. And she's not on your yeah, page. Yeah. And I'm like, no, like that's not on my For You page. I know. It's so it's weird. So weird. Different pages. I was at VidCon and I was like. So many of these people, like, I love their content now that I know about them, but, like, they don't come up on my page. I know. It's so bizarre. Okay, last thing I want to touch on is mental health because I know that's really important to you. Yeah. Um, You have an awesome, like, merch brand where I know you donate a proceed of your earnings to your favorite mental health organization. It's a children's mental health. Yes. Um, What what, what is it called? It's called Your Mom Cares. Mm -hmm. It was originally started by the Obamas and then given. Stop. I didn't know that. Yeah. I love the Obamas. Given to Sharon Feldstein, Jonah Hill's mom. No way. uh, um, Adam Levine's mom um, and some other celebrity moms um, that run it. And they are actually like actively coming up with programs, working with hospitals Mm -hmm. to like really make a huge impact on kids' mental health. Wow. That is fabulous. It's incredible. I've. You know, I've had the opportunity to, like, beat with them, see what they're doing firsthand, and Mm -hmm. it blows me away. Well, they, I'm sure they love you. I love them. (laughs) But, yeah. Um, Okay, and you have, I thought you came up with, like, this 
slightly genius idea of the llama, <laughs> the weighted llama. Yes. Because people typically use like a weighted blanket for, I guess, anxiety or people. some people just like it. Yeah. But I know it's really supposed to help with anxiety, like the weight of a yeah. blanket, you know, feeling yeah, the, whatever. The weight, especially specifically on your chest, mm -hmm. um, helps calm your central nervous system. Mm -hmm. So even like if you were like having an anxiety attack right now, like if I were to hug you super tight, it would mm -hmm. probably help bring you down. Oh, wow. Um, but I, I wanted to create something that was like, cute fun you could take everywhere like a weighted blanket like you're probably not lugging that around like that's a yeah. big mine was like 20 pounds it's too. also heavy as shit it is no, heavy mine's like, uh, first it's like a four pan stuffed animal that you can kind of like pop on your chest uh -huh. you can carry around um but i also thought it might help hopefully like destigmatize you mm -hmm. know because it's like we all love stuffed animals so it's like i thought it would help you know raise awareness destigmatize mm -hmm. and hopefully provide comfort yeah so it's like the cutest little llama that's yeah. weighted and um I just think it's so cool, like how much you incorporate mental health. I loved how in your Maldives video, you were talking, you like did that one segment of being like, listen, the only reason I'm here is because you like went through your mental health spiel. And I know it's not, not a spiel, but you know, in the video, I thought that was yeah. an awesome way to quickly integrate that. Um, so I guess I want, you, I want you to expand a little, like why is mental health so prominent in your life? Like why, why are you doing so much to share? about it yeah. on your platform when you don't have to um for me i really like corn i, I can't say <laughs> i can't say for me without that coming out of my mouth it's now corn. i just said that the other day <laughs> i like i would say every five minutes my poor boyfriend uh -huh. um i grew up really struggling with mental health mm -hmm. i just i have had ocd as long as i can remember depression as long as i can remember i remember being like five and having depressive episodes and i you know throughout the course of my life, throughout getting bullied, moving around, it eventually came to a head where I did attempt to take my life. Oh my gosh, Lexi. And so for for everything that I've gone through and, you know, just my life experiences, the biggest thing growing up for me was I thought I was the only one. Like I thought no one else was having these weird thoughts in their head. I thought no one else was like going through these things things you know it just I feel like that's very normal it made me feel weird yeah and so being able if I was 13 going through this sitting in my bathroom crying and I knew that there was a youtuber out there that I liked watching their videos and they had been through what I had been through and come out of it that would have helped me a lot um starting to talk to friends and finding out that they struggled too that mm -hmm. helped me a lot mm -hmm. so for me it's something it's extremely important it's something I'm always going to talk about I'm always going to use my platform for mm -hmm. I it's normal. It is normal to feel weird because you have stuff going on. Mm -hmm. It's not your fault. Mm -hmm. It literally comes from brain chemicals. It comes from trauma. None of it is your fault. Mm -hmm. But it is something that doesn't have to define you. It's something you can get so much help for. And we're even inventing new ways to help people mm -hmm. every single day. Um, but yeah, I, I always am going to use my platform to talk about that. And hopefully, like, if I could help one person... Like, I could die tomorrow and be okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, what you're doing, Lexi, is actually phenomenal. I feel like you, a lot of people, it's kind of a buzzword, like, currently, yeah. like, mental health or, you know, anxiety. I feel like yeah. people, like, sometimes they'll throw it on a t-shirt or throw it on whatever. But, like, the way that you integrate it and it's quick, it's to the point, um, and it's it's truly helpful. Yeah. And, um I don't know. I just I like I want to thank you on behalf of the people that I'm sure have been like uh, uh, you've helped. Seriously. It's like it's actually so cool because you have an awesome, like fun, bubbly personality. But the fact that you can get a little serious and maybe help someone out is really special. And it, it makes me want to like make my videos a bigger purpose or you know what I mean? Like make it feel more helpful to someone one day. So I think that's really cool Thanks. what you do. You know, speaking of mental health, is there are there any like tips or tricks that you do to, you know, get yourself out of a mental health, yeah. health funk or anxiety episode or depression episode? Yeah. Um, currently, it's another one of those things that's definitely trial and error. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with like depressive episodes, the hardest thing ever is to get out of bed. Like it feels like there's like a weight on you. You're mm -hmm. just like, I can't do this. But for me going on a walk I like love going on a could walk. turn my whole day around.
going on a walk, I've noticed when I'm regularly exercising, and they've also directly linked your gut health to your mental health. Oh, wow. So when you're, not to slam fast food, but when you're eating healthier whole foods at home that aren't covered in saturation and stuff, Mm -hmm. your mental health is improved. Like they have done studies. I've felt different. I know so many friends that feel different. I mean, it makes sense. Like it's all connected to your body. Your brain's a muscle. Your brain has to eat too. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to feed it proper things. And Um, food literally is fuel. (laughs) It's fuel. But for me, you know, keeping up with exercise as much as I can, it doesn't mean I have to go kill myself in the gym for an hour. I built up to that. But going on walks, doing exercise, eating whole foods, eating fruits, um, journaling, um, things like that help kind of prevent those episodes, also help me pull out of them. But um, being kind to yourself, being patient with yourself, mm-hmm. knowing that like it happens, but it gets better. It always gets better. My mom knew this woman that had survived the Holocaust. Oh, wow. And something she always said is nothing is permanent, uh-huh. which means, you know, the bad times aren't permanent, but that also the true. good times, you need to cherish them. And it's something I actually have tattooed on my back that oh, I got wow. when she passed away. Oh, my gosh. Um, but she was a huge inspiration. So... With all that being said, um, those are some of my tips. And then if I'm in the middle of a panic attack, deep breathing, essential oils. Um, what do you mean essential oils? Like I like to like smell essential oils. Okay. Um, I've heard that um, using your senses. Like yeah. when you're having a panic attack, like if you were to like touch ice yeah. or like, um, you it know, put your face your brain. in. Yeah, yeah. It's like, whoa, like I'm here right that now. That does work for me. Yeah. Or like jumping in a pool, obviously, like that's not yeah. like, accessible to everyone. But like s- little things like that. Yeah. Um, uh, I guess like activating your senses. That makes yeah. sense to the essential oils. I never thought of that. That helps me a lot. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like it's so funny if you're like stick your forehead in like ice water, it like shocks your yeah. brain. It can pull you out of it. Uh huh. It's like, yeah. whoa. Um, you can get your you can almost like step outside your own crazy yeah, brain and your like, spiraling thoughts. Whoa. Uh-huh. But yeah, it's like a I call it like my toolbox. So it's okay. like an imaginary toolbox where I'm like, okay, Wait, I love that. I have deep breathing, I have decatastrophizing, all these things that I learned in therapy. What so. else are there any other little things besides this essential oils? Um I like to play solitaire, something that gets my brain off of it. Mm -hmm. Because if I play it long enough, I get distracted and my brain like starts to calm down. Mm -hmm. I mean, I should really like start doing a podcast on mental health because I've learned so much. Yeah. (laughs) I've like spent so many hours in like exposure therapy and stuff to like be able to get out of my house when I like couldn't back in the day. So, um, but yeah, there's there's a lot. Mm -hmm. I think I I think just also knowledge helps in general. The more you know, the better off you can be with it. Uh Uh-huh. And recognizing like what's going on and yeah. how to you know take s- steps to fix it, um, yeah. I think everything about mental health is so cool. How open it is now, yeah. and um, I don't know. Creators like you, like watching you admit that you like go through these things, is is awesome Thanks. for people. Yeah, totally. Um, Okay, I guess that's like the end of our episode. <laughs> um, Lexi, it has been such a privilege to have you here Aww. and um, interview you. I think that you are a star and I'm so excited to see where your channel goes. Thanks. It's been an honor to be here. And yeah. I love you. I love making moves with TK. <laughs> we'll have to. I know we've talked about it, but we're going to go on our hot girl walks with yes. your dog, Benji. Yes. He loves hot girl walks. Yes. <laughs> I tell him, I'm like, Benji, it's hot girl summer. And he picks up the pace. I swear. Yeah, it's And it's quite literally hot as it fork outside it is. right now. Anyway, <laughs> um, Lexi, where can everyone follow you and uh, get your merch and everything? Um, everything's at Lexi Hensler and then LexiLama.com. Awesome. Okay. Yay. Everyone go subscribe and comment down below your favorite animal, I yeah. guess. <laughs> and be sure to follow Lexi on everything. Check out her weighted llamas. They're amazing. And be sure to make someone stay this week. Peace.